This term is when we're going to introduce to you just shortly before your next assessment task. I know you just got out of some assessment tasks, but I want to make sure you're headed in the right direction. Before your next assessment task, you will finally meet that big topic I've been talking about for a long time called calculus. You will meet the first idea within it, which is called differentiation, limits, first principles, that kind of thing. When we deal with these, Indices is the first major kind of foundational idea that you just have to know just like in times tables. You know when you're doing fractions and you have to add something like, say, these guys, right? This is not about times tables, but if you do not do your times tables, your access to this is so restricted because in order to, of course, solve this question, what do you have to do? You have, to, you have to get a common denominator, don't you? Which requires the multiplication of these two numbers. So if you cannot look at that and think 21 without even really devoting much conscious thought to it, then obviously you will find fractions very difficult, okay? It's kind of the same deal with indices. When you're mo first moving into calculus and you're dealing with this idea of differentiation and all that kind of thing, indices are gonna come up just like times tables are going to come up in fractions, okay? So I want to make sure you are fluent in those and confident and quick and accurate. That's what this is about, okay? Now, index laws is where we're going to start. You guys know a whole bunch of index laws. I don't need to work them all out for you, bless you. I wonder if you guys can help me actually list them out in any order. I'm not really fussed. Can someone give me an example of something which you just know take to be fact when you're dealing with indices? Someone. Anyone. Eric, go ahead. Give me one. Uh, a to the 0 equals 1. Okay, fantastic. Anything raised to the power of 0 equals 1. This is a bit of a weird one, right? How would you go about proving this, by the way? How would you go about trying to convince someone, okay, if you raise anything to the power of 0, it's going to be 1. What do you reckon, Shane? You write log a plus 1 equals Yeah, okay, so you could appeal to logs for this. However, I will point out, we, we learn indices first. And then we come to log second. So even though I could do this, um, it's a little awkward because this is usually the foundation for logs, not the other way around. Though it is a valid way of doing it as we get to later. Someone want to give me another suggestion? Yeah. If you had like, um, since when you subtract, uh, like divide things, so A uh, to the 3. Pause there, Eric. Okay. Someone want to help me work out, because what Eric's about to refer to is another index law. Could someone articulate the one he's talking about? Yeah. So if it was like A to the power of 5, about eight to the power five. Okay, so you can give me an example. Can anyone give me the law that actually states what the is talking about? Which uh, reference? A x uh, divided by a x. Yeah, yeah, so this is a what you're giving me is a specific case that'll get me to this. But if we want to speak more generally, you can actually have numbers with the same base and any power. So we'll just call that y, I guess, right? And then what's the result? A x power. So when you divide numbers with the same base, you subtract their powers. By the way, that has a flip side. This is actually usually the harder version. What's the easier version of this? Not division, but multiplication. So if instead of dividing numbers with the same base, you multiply them, you're going to add the indices. OK, so now we had a few attempts at it already. How would you use either of these to prove the first index law you've got written there? Can you take it? You started to get there when we were writing this. Declan, what would you say? Um, okay, so like, for example, if you had like um, two squared divided by two squared, according to the law, the power will become zero, because two minus two. Very good, okay. And two divided by, uh, something divided by itself is one. So therefore one is to the power of zero. Fantastic, good job Declan. And I think a lot of people were here. That's just a spontaneous course. Um, here's one of the funny things, right? Laws, laws in mathematics and science are very different from laws in like in society, right? Laws in society are we want something arranged a particular way so that you know things work best, you know, people don't kill each other or steal from each other, etc. But in many senses those are arbitrary, right? Driving the left-hand side of the road, driving the right-hand side of the road. Does it really matter? It actually easily could be the other way. But laws, like the index laws, are not like that. It's not like we can just decide what should a to the zero be. Right? This follows on naturally from our definitions of what indices are. There's, no, there's nothing else it could be. Right? So the laws are what we emerge, what we observe almost. All right, you got any other index laws for me? That's three. Um, a to the power of x in brackets to the power of y. 
Okay, so this is the power, power of a power. What are you going to get at the other end? A to the power of? Excellent. Very good. Okay. Now, by the way, I will point out, because a few people uh, ran up against this this morning, this is quite a... Actually, no, I'm going I'm to wait till the next one. I'll wait till the next one. Uh, I want to think about what happens when you raise another thing to a power. If instead of a power is raised to a power, if you have like a product and that gets raised to a power, what's that going to give you? So the whole idea of putting something in brackets is whatever operation is being applied to this thing applies to the whole thing. So this power of x, we're applying to both of those. Now this is the one we ran up against. We're pretty good at going from left to right. Not so good at going from right to left. That's seen far less often. Okay? I can't remember the exact example, but I think someone showed me this. Something like this. All right? Yeah. I don't know, something of that nature where x and y are some random bits and pieces that you've got there. Okay? You can see here that this is an instance of this. Uh, a and B are any numbers you like, so I've just put X and Y there. What are the powers here in this case? So this is a fifth, right? Which, by the way, is another one of our index laws. How would you state that, generally speaking? How do you relate roots, I was going to say square root, but any roots, with indices? Yeah. A to the X on Y. Yep, sure. Equals yep. the Y to the root of A to the X. Yeah. Yeah, that just rolls off the tongue, right? The, uh, the Y through. I will say, usually the way this is stated, just to make it a little easier to say, is if you've got A to the power of 1 over N, that's the Nth root of A, right? Like the second, third, fourth, fifth root, or whatever. Okay? So as you pointed out, this is X to the a fifth. This is Y to the a fifth. So we're quite good at recognizing when the bases are the same, we know what to do with the indices, right? But if the powers, if the indices, if the exponents are the same, you can also rewind this law and combine them, right? Do you notice that? So what would we write in this case? X, Y, bracket, all the power of it. Yeah, very good. This is something you've intuitively been dealing with for quite a while. One more color. In the very specific cases, square roots. Right? In fact, way before you were really thinking about index laws in a proper way, you knew what to do with this, right? Root A times root B. What would you say that is? So long as A and B are positive, that's true. Okay? So this and this are just a special version of this, right? This is the expansion, this is the factorization as well. Okay? What do you think? Have we got all the index laws? Are we missing any? There are negative indices, right? If someone hasn't said anything yet. What can we do? How would we state the index law to do with negative indices? Um, a to the power of minus x equals 1 over ax. Cool. And again, what this comes from is actually probably this one is probably the easiest way to state it, right? When you are dividing, if you divide by successive terms, eventually you'll get a negative, won't you? But dividing and dividing and dividing is another way of writing a fraction. Okay. So we know these are speaking a common language. So far, so good. Now, each of these index laws has a flip side, right? Which is why I've stated this heading as indices and logs. Every index law gives birth to a log law. Some are easy, some are a little more complicated. So I'm just going to roll off this example stuff over here. Every one of these has a parallel. I wonder if you can work them out. Some of them, like I said, are easy. I might just put on one more thing which I just remembered. It's a bit trivial, but it's important for our log laws in a second. Okay, let's start with, say, the top one, which is the first one you gave me. There's a log law that goes with that index law. How would you state it? I'll give you a clue. It starts with log. <laughs> yeah, what do you reckon? Um, log, uh, log one. Base A, so I would usually say, even though I, I understood what you meant, so it was obviously clear, but I would tend to read that left to right. So I'd say log base A of 1, taking log of 1. So long as you say the right words, particularly if you say base, then I know exactly what you're talking about. Log base A of 1 is equal to? So what you've done is, you've taken this, right? And all you've done is rewrite this 
initial equation, this exponential equation, it's got an exponent in it, as a log equation, right? You've just rearranged and out popped this. In other words, log of base anything of one equals zero. So far, so good. Have a look. I'll let you take any of them in any order that you like. Give me another log law that comes out of any of those index laws. Yeah. Um, log base ax divided by... Oh, Which, I am I going with this one? Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, yeah, it's fine. Log um, base a... x minus... Like that? Um, yeah. Yeah? And then minus log base a y... Yeah. <coughs> Can someone help me out? How does it how does it finish? What do you reckon, William? Okay. So you can sort of see it there, and this is why I'm trying to highlight that these come together, they come in pairs, right? When you divide numbers of the same base, you subtract their indices. When you subtract logs of the same base, you divide their now this thing in here has a bunch of different names. Uh, <laughs> the, the technical name would probably be useful here is argument, but that actually means a whole bunch of different things. So I'm just going to say you divide the parts that you're taking the log of. That's the actual number. Okay? Yeah, Eric, you got a suggestion or a question? Or a... Well, I was just going to say like exactly the same thing with plus. But... Yeah, okay. Well, let's do it, right? Again, here when you multiply numbers in the same base, you add their indices. So if you add logs with the same base, what do you do? You multiply. Brackets important. Okay. Right, so you're starting to get the hang of it, right? What I'm going to get you to do is I'm going to pause there. I'm going to ask you to either go back to that worksheet that you're working on this morning, or if you have finished it, I'd like you to open up to 6A, 6A in your premium textbook. And I want you to have a go at using these. For a challenge, if you really want it, you can try and state the log laws for all of these that correspond, and then we'll come back together in about 10 minutes.